Hi, my name is Ken Pooch Van Druten. I've mixed Linkin Park for the past couple of years. And this is how I use H Reverb. How I tell a reverb is, is excellent is by listening to its tail. Uh, usually reverbs fail in the end with their tail. Uh, they have a thing called breakup. Some reverb technologies use reproduce kind of like the feedback part of a delay uh, on the tail end of a reverb, which makes it sound, it doesn't sound very natural. Uh, it's the very first thing that I noticed about the H reverb was that the tail end of this reverb just sounds absolutely beautiful and amazing. When that's working properly, it can fit in your mix and you can actually end up using more reverb uh, than uh, you would traditionally use because of the breakup. Let's get in a little bit to talking about uh, how I use the H reverb. Let's talk about first about how in the live world, uh, how this, this particular plugin is really useful. The first thing that you'll notice when right off the bat when you bring this plugin up is that all the controls that you really need to make a great sounding reverb are all right in front of you. Uh, there's pre-delay, build-up size, the actual reverb time um, is right in front of you, the ER tail, the dry to wet, and the output is all right in front of you. But you'll also notice down here at the bottom there are some other uh, check boxes and also uh, this box right here that says expand. When you open up expand, you'll notice that there is a lot of other tools to help you to create some great sounding reverbs. These tools down here as you get into them, I guess you might call them more advanced tools. Um, as you get into them, uh, you will discover that they can really be your friend and help you to make your, your reverb sound the greatest. But again, this collapse and this expand button right here uh, is, is really exciting because if without those tools on the bottom, um, you still can make some great sounding reverbs. Now let's not forget about presets. Presets up here in the load section. Now you'll notice there are a bunch of great artist presets right off the bat here. Um, that you know, people have spent a bunch of time uh, kind of tweaking their own kind of presets, and uh, hopefully you'll, you'll enjoy some of those. Um, I have my own presets in here. I made three of them. One's called a, a Pooch Vocal, Pooch Drum Kit, and Pooch Snare. The Pooch Snare and Pooch Drum Kit are intended to be used together. Um, I tend to, when I'm doing drums, I tend to make... Uh, two different spaces in my reverb. If you notice, if you stand in front of a drum kit in an ambient space, you'll notice that the snare drum is a little bit louder than most of the other drums. Um, and this tends to excite the, the ambient space a little bit differently than the rest of the drum kit. Um, so the way that I deal with that is to actually use two different reverbs. Uh, one is kind of a short uh, reverb and the other is kind of an overall kit reverb. So first off, let's listen to the kit a little bit uh, by itself with no reverb at all. This is just the kit. So everything's you know very close mic'd. There isn't any ambience on there. This is from a show. All of the, the microphones are very, very close to each of the individual drums. Uh, in order to make that mix. So we need some ambience on there to create some space for these drums, to create space within your mix for these drums. So uh, let's first listen to my snare verb, which is a very tight verb. Here's this. So you notice it's very tight, very small. Uh, I have a little bit of pre-delay going on in, in there. I put that actually, even though it's labeled as snare, I put it a little bit on my kick drum and a little bit on my snare drum, those two, uh, to kind of give them their own little space. Then what I do is, using a different sounding reverb, which is this one, I create kind of an overall space for the drum kit. I'm gonna play that for you along with the snare verb so you can understand uh, the overall space that I've created here.
So that's, that's the space that I've created for the drums. Um, now I'm gonna mute the snare reverb so that you just hear the kit reverb. And it's subtle, but you can hear the difference between not using, just having one reverb and having the two different reverbs. So here is the overall kit reverb without the snare reverb. So there's that, let me put it back in so you get an idea. So it, all it is is creating kind of an artificial space where the, uh, the snare drum is exciting a different reverb or exciting the ambient part of a room, making it better. So to me, that sounds a little more natural, like a kit in a very nice sounding room. That's why I use the two of those in my, in my presets. I tend to use shorter reverb times. I don't use really big reverbs unless it's a special reverb uh, for my drum kit. Um, I do tend to use uh, a little bit longer uh, vocal reverbs. Here is one of my vocalists. Uh, let's see if I can get that happening. Again, it's a show, so you, you know, he's got, there's all kinds of stage volume going on. It's, we'll, we'll wait until we get to the uh, section where he's really singing. But I know. Shine! Eyes! Lie! So this is my Pooch vocal preset. Get sat down, paranoid, looking over my back. It's like a whirlwind inside of my head. It's like I can't stop what I'm hearing with it. So you can really hear on the tail end of that reverb, there's no breakup, it's really smooth, really nice all the way out. This is what makes this reverb so much better than a lot of the other plugins. The tail end of that reverb doesn't interfere with any of the, the next line of the vocal. So it, it just makes for a really, really nice sounding reverb. Again, this is vocal verb on both of my vocalists. <laughs> Just really super smooth tail right at the end. In my preset, I've done a little bit of EQing and a little bit of uh, low-pass filtering in the reverb itself. I also, just as a little trick, I tend to use more pre-delay than maybe a lot of people do. I'm talking 60 to 80 milliseconds of pre-delay. And what this does is give space to the uh, original signal. So you have the original signal and then before you hear reverb, there's about 60 or 80 milliseconds of space that happens. And that's the pre-delay knob that's right over here on the left-hand side. You can adjust where the reverb actually occurs. And I tend to adjust that for intelligibility, of vocal intelligibility of the drum kit, adjust the pre-delay to get that into, uh, you know, rein that in and get the intelligibility right. One last thing that I really want to show you on this, on this reverb that's pretty amazing and a very useful tool is as you're creating this, instead of having to listen to you know a drum kit all the time, um, in live sound, you know maybe you don't have your virtual playback set up or whatever, but you want to hear kind of what this reverb's going to do. There's this little thing right here called a test button. Uh, if you if you test it, what it'll do is excite the reverb. Um, so that you can get an idea of what that reverb is gonna sound like. So for instance, let's choose somebody's uh, kind of large, here's a large dark vocal plate from John Lemon. If we 
If we push the test button, it really gives you an idea of what's, what that reverb is gonna do when you put a signal into it. And that's all right here part of this plugin, so you don't have to route anything to it to hear that reverb and to know uh, that that reverb is gonna work well in the situation that you're in. Again, I'm gonna push this test button and then let's be quiet all the way out. It's all about the end tail of a reverb. And uh, so I won't talk over that, but listen how far this reverb tails out. It's really great. So you get the idea. I hope you really enjoy using the H Reverb. It's a great tool. You know, honestly, I'm probably going to uh, replace a bunch of my hardware units that I have in my system. Uh, open those units up for maybe some special and use these. Uh, this new plugin, H Reverb, um, will be my new my new go to uh, reverb. Um, so enjoy.